All right, it's, it's recording. Cool. Hey, everyone. Welcome to ZDS 070. Uh, we have Caitlin back. Caitlin, I think you were on... Hello. I want to say you were on like episode 43 or 47. I can't remember, but it's been it's Ooh. been a while. It has. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the exact episode, but it's in there somewhere yeah. in the archives. It's somewhere in the archives. <laughs> so I know Twitch, like they Twitch changed... Were you streaming on Twitch? You were, right? I was. I think they last changed time we were doing a lot of their. They changed a lot of their policies, right? So did that affect any of your recordings? Do you know? Um, I was doing it so every time they came out, um, uh, pretty much the day of, I'd kind of throw them over to YouTube. So oh, okay. all, all my stuff has been saved. So and That's I don't. Good. Aside from the the song Jeff made for me, I don't do any music. So that's I, true. That's a good point. That's I think that was the big thing, right? Was everyone's if they're playing music, they like yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have to blow up the the recording or something. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's but, one of the perks of having your boss make music for you. I know. <laughs> well, that's got that synthesizer. So yeah, yeah. I haven't <laughs> opened mine yet. I just got my package last night, so I'm excited to play with it. Nice for for everyone uh, who's who's not at Narwhal, <laughs> we we got we uh, Jeff Cross gave us all little synthesizers for for Christmas. So I've little, been playing with mine a little bit. Are they Korg? Or I yeah, think it's Korg. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't really know what to do with mine. <laughs> like I'll just I'll hit it some notes. It could just be. But... It could just be. Um, I don't know. Maybe just like a desktop like fidget toy you know like i have a, a yeah. stress ball over here or whatever so every now and again you can just lean over and like press some buttons maybe i've actually like <laughs> purposely cleared my desk of fidget toys i for really? a while i was purposely putting them on yeah but now the only like the only fidget toy i have is the the pen so mm. yeah but by the way i'm like ridiculously enthralled with these fountain pens <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh i'm so excited i so, remember when we were getting like um the unboxing preview of all the stuff and i was yeah. super excited about the planner which is so just kind of boring i think but i was like i'm gonna be so organized this year yeah yeah for <laughs> for, for for people just listening we, we also got in addition to the synthesizer we got a fountain pen i think this was from victor mm -hmm. and we got an organizer i think the organizer was from victor too yeah right yeah okay Cool. I actually, I, I didn't find much use for the, the organizer. I, I, I prefer using binders for, oh, for my notes. Oh, interesting. Okay. I feel like I'm uh, gluttonous with my paper. And so I need like big pieces of paper and I need yeah. to be able to feel like I can put more in at any time, even though I never fill one up, you know? Really? That's I just, <laughs> I why I feel like, I just want to know that I could. <laughs> uh, see, I'm, I think I'm the opposite, right? Like the smaller, the better. I have like a... Yeah. I have, hang on. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I didn't realize we were doing prop show and tell, but I have like this, this very small notebook, which is like a, a very um, pretty green color. Ooh, that and was a just, cool sound it made oh. when you did that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know no longer need mechanical keyboards. I need whatever you just did. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like a hard shell and it has like all of this stuff on it. You can like, I don't know. I just like small notebooks. I even have like a very tiny like to-do oh, wow. list thing here. So I'm just, yeah. cause I feel like if something's too big, then I have to reach over and it feels like such a commitment to like open it up and like yeah. find the next page. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. Well, I've been, uh, <laughs> I'm going to look like such a nerd. <laughs> um, so, so this is my, this is my carrying around one. Like this oh, one, okay. I the other one I try to keep at my desk, Yeah. but my wife got this one for me for Christmas. And yeah, I don't know. It's got some little nice tassels on it. Ooh. it I don't know. It feels it feels manly to me. Yeah, it looks legit. Way. <laughs> but let me see if I. Oh, I'm, I'm missing my tags. I got these little tags to put on my pieces of paper so I could like organize my notebook better. The girls must have taken it somewhere. So. <laughs> but yeah, I do have I do have this my little extra cartridges for my for oh. my fountain pen. Oh, nice. I, already, I already ran out of the first one. Really? But, how long, yeah. did it, how I was long so, were you able to use it for? Well, I've been using it since we got it. I actually got mine before everyone else, I think, because Carol just brought oh. mine over. But um, You get special yeah. treatment, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I get special treatment. I get to go to Jeff's house and see pigs when I want to. Oh, that's but, true. Yeah. We haven't been there in so long because we've just been worried about COVID and stuff. Yeah. So... It is, 
it is what it is. But Caitlin, we were we were talking a little bit about the new year, so mm-hmm. you're you're just coming back now. I am. Yeah, I'm just. I, I still got like a cloudy head. I literally, um, I I got back in my apartment at like. 11 p.m. last night and I was like okay I need to go to sleep right now and be up and ready to work like my first full day of work and I'm just like, yeah I woke up this morning and I was like I can't like I'm so groggy um but, but where, where were you before that um so I was uh, I didn't I don't I, I shouldn't have mentioned this but I, I did visit my boyfriend um over in Pennsylvania for a few weeks over the holidays uh just because uh, we don't get to see each other that often, and so yeah. it was kind of important for us to have that holiday together. But we we took a yeah. lot of precautions. We didn't really go anywhere. We just wanted to be in each other's company. So yeah, um, it was, it was well, that, a nice little break to the end of the year. Yeah, so with my parents, my parents come down to Arizona a lot, and they've come over, I think like twice since COVID started. And mm-hmm. it's always it's always a hard thing. Like we were, they didn't come for Christmas. They wanted to, but they were spiking they're in connecticut for most of the year yeah and they were spiking and they didn't feel safe coming out and uh, it's a hard thing but mm-hmm. you know the the human the human connections especially like family or a partner i feel like those are those are things worth you know braving it for so yeah yeah, yeah. for sure but yeah hey, do you have any do you have any big plans for 2021 <laughs> Plus, I haven't been thwarted hmm. already by coups <laughs> or oh, other weird man. stuff. Uh, I just, I don't know. I guess we'll see where the year takes. I feel like I, I had big plans for 2020 and okay. none of them happened. And so now I'm kind of weird. Like, should I even bother making big plans or goals for this year? Or should yeah. I just ride it out and see what happens? Yeah. Um, could you talk could you tell us about your your big goals for 2020 oh is- yeah so i really um 2020 was my first full year at narwhal i joined narwhal in the august of 2019 or was it july i don't know one of those months um and so 2020 i was gonna be like oh i can't wait to go to conferences and like be on the the other side of the booth you know oh, man. to people and that went out the window. Um, I also got my passport late 2019, and I was like, 2020 is going to be the year I travel internationally for the first time in my life. And that also got uh, delayed a little bit. So. <laughs> Man, COVID really went after you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, comparatively to other people, I think I, oh, yeah. I, got, um, I, got, a, I got off pretty well, but... Yeah, just some some like personal things that I was looking forward to twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, did not happen. So maybe this year, I'm 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 still optimistic. Even just hearing you talk about it, though, I feel like I feel like in many ways, like I lost a year almost. Yeah, like, yeah, right. Trying to think back to January twenty twenty, I did like a blog article not long ago about just my twenty twenty and how that went and stuff like that. Okay. And, I think when it, so I, I listed out some of the positive things that happened for me, like we had our child, mm-hmm. uh, number six. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, there's just some other some other kind of neat things that look kind of good in a bullet list. But mm-hmm. like just looking back, like what we were talking about, it's like, what happened? <laughs> like oh, we we I remember doing that too. I remember so I remember thinking, oh man, I really want to try to get into NG Conf this year. And then I mm-hmm. checked the dates and it was like the week that Sadie was was due to be born, our our youngest. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh shoot, I can't do it. Um and that seems like last week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like it really does. Weird. You know? See, I feel like it's so weird because twenty twenty feels simultaneously so long ago and also just yesterday i mean granted it's we're only a few days in 2021 but i I don't know like i think back to march which is the last time i like really actually went somewhere i think and it's just like a decade ago you know like oh remember remember going places i barely remember it (laughs) Uh, so i remember going out to uh, lunch. This was like right before going on paternity leave. Um, mm-hmm. Me and Jeff and Carol went out to lunch um, to get, you know, just to get a burger, and it would be the last time we saw each other for a while. But we yeah. didn't realize it would be like this long. <laughs> so I've seen them both since then, just like not together and not in like a normal context. So yeah, yeah, 
It's just weird. Mm. It's just bizarre. For sure, for sure. Do you have yeah. any um so so now that we're through the year that was twenty twenty, do you have any <laughs> plans for twenty one or I'm trying to change a lot of things about myself. Um, okay. So I'm yeah, it's just there's just a lot of stuff I'm I'm thinking through. I don't I f- I feel like one of the biggest ones is focus, and I feel like I'm failing oh. at that already because I'm trying yeah. to do so many things at the same time. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the big thing for me is um, you know in terms of work context, just trying to be more productive, um, mm. be someone who gets a lot of stuff done with their yeah. time. I've been like, I, I feel like we, I've been we've been talking about this you and me for for a while back, like just trying to figure out well, how do I get more efficient or. Mm-hmm. I don't have enough time in the day. How do I? How do I get? Make it so the time I do have is more efficient, and that's. It's just a hard thing to lick, but I, I, I think at some point I just got to where, like, there's, there's not much more thinking about it. I just got to do it. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to force myself into, if that makes sense. No, I so. think that totally makes sense, and I, I feel like I relate to that on a personal level. I think. Um, the past few months, I don't know if it was the holidays or what have you, but I feel like my, my motivation and my productivity just really took a a big dip. (laughs) And so I'm trying to also do that as well. Just like trying to find like, what, what is it that will get me feeling like myself again? And not just like trying to get through. That's, that's exactly what I'm looking for is trying to feel like myself again, which is, I don't know. It's unfortunate, <laughs> but I, I feel like, you know, so far we've, we've been doing really well. There's, there's a lot of like personal stuff I'm trying to do too, like just uh, be, be a neater person, be a more yeah. organized person and mm-hmm. trying to, trying to uh, going along with accomplish things, just trying to do a lot of, a lot of things like uh, I'm, I'm setting up um, a personal site for myself and trying to set some benchmarks for like number of blogs to write and okay. stuff like that. So you're checking off a box right now, Caitlin. Cause uh, one of them is, yeah, one of them is having those ZDS episodes. So I'm, oh, I'm trying awesome. to get to just one a week. So four, four a week was, not, was not particularly sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. I can but do that. It was fun while it lasted. So, mm-hmm. and I, um, we're, we're in the process of moving to a new house right now. And when we do, uh, I should have better internet, so I'm hoping. I'm I'm thinking of maybe trying and doing some more streaming again with that. So cool. We'll see. Nice. I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm I'm throwing stuff against the wall and hoping some things stick. And it feels even even with kind of the crappy stuff that's happened so far, it feels it feels optimistic to me in a way 2020 wasn't. So I'm I'm encouraged by that. That's good. So. Yeah. Do you have any anything for 2021 so far? Whoa! I'm switched. sorry. I was hoping it would be super <laughs> seamless. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry I about it. I realized I was using the wrong camera. Um, <laughs> yeah. For, for 2021, uh, just to really echo what you said, I, I really want to find um, just some way to get back to uh, being a productive and motivated developer. Um, it's, it's been a little bit of a struggle, if I'm being totally honest. And again, I think it might have just been like the holidays or the end of the year, but I've been finding myself definitely in this slump. Um, and I think something that's been really helping me is um, acknowledging my free time doesn't also have to include development related things. Yeah. Um, I think it can be hard sometimes, you know, when you're when you're in a uh, when you're surrounded by such motivated and accomplished people. And then, you know, you're scrolling through Twitter maybe and you see like all the cool things that people are working on and they're not even like part of their job. They're just out there doing it. It can be really like, oh, what am I doing with my life? You know what I mean? Um, um, But I think uh, something that's been helping me is, is just acknowledging the fact that everything I do every minute of every day doesn't always have to be work or development related. Yeah. Um, and so I think my, my goal for 2021 is to maybe explore some new hobbies, like tap into the more creative things that um, aren't so uh, staring at code, perhaps, <laughs> which I don't know. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. I feel like it could go either way. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, stepping away from the code every now and again is good to 
give you like a refresher. So. Oh, I, I absolutely think so. There's um, a friend of mine just sent me over Rich Hickey's um, talk. He's the guy who does closure. It was, mm. He has a talk called hammock based development. Have you, have you happened Ooh. to heard that before? No, it's, it's very interesting because he talks kind of about um, like he brings up sleep and there's, there's some interesting things about sleep. Like um, I think, I don't, it was either Edison or Albert Einstein, but I think it was probably Edison. Um, they would do something where they'd like hold a, hen, a pen in their hands and fall asleep and like take a nap. Uh -huh. But it was set up so that the pen would fall when they fell asleep and that would wake them up. But that would give their brain just enough time, like their unconscious brain, just enough time to like make some new connections. And then they'd start into the problem again. Oh. And it was, yeah, it's really cool to think about that. I don't know if he mentions that in his talk or not. But yeah. that, it's kind of this, the idea that development should be a lot of thinking about a problem, like thinking intently about a problem and giving yourself breaks from that problem for your subconscious Mm -hmm. to go and make like do what it does and make connections and then you come at it fresh and it's like yeah i think i think outside hobbies and things just have that have like nothing to do with code are really good at making those connections sometimes. yeah yeah for sure so do, do you have any hobbies in mind um so i think last year i started to explore things um, I don't want to out myself. I'm not actually, because I, I always do this thing where I mention something and then people ask me about it later and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> but I think last year I got really involved or not really involved, but I started exploring things like, um, like doing yoga. Like I had always done some form of workout, but I never like considered yoga as part of like, uh, like part of my routine because I don't know, I thought it was like too easy or whatever, which is totally, Have you, if you've ever seen like people who do yoga, yoga, like it's, it's yeah. crazy. I don't know why I ever oh, thought it was easy because it's I, I, I have a funny story about that actually. I'll wait really? to tell it to you, you're done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so just exploring that, like I got some new yoga mats that I'm really excited about. Um, I, I started subscribe. I'm not subscribed anymore, but I subscribed to a service called HelloFresh which sends you cooking ingredients and then like a little um, pamphlet that tells you how to prepare the meal. And yeah. so that kind of taught me the foundations of cooking, which I'm embarrassed to say I did not know prior to that. So um, just just feeling more comfortable in the kitchen and actually finding that fun is something that's new to me as well. So yeah, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. So so my my yoga story is um, in, in college. <laughs> I so um, in my dorm floor we, we didn't have frats at our college so dorm floors were kind of like the frats okay and for like it, it was like a Friday night and we're like what are we gonna do and the answer was I know let's go crash the yoga <laughs> the, the the yoga class on campus and so oh like the God. whole our whole floor I think it, so it must have been at least 20 20 guys um, we show up and we show up in the like well, we try to make the most ridiculous outfits <laughs> imaginable. Like, um, we had a lot of wrestlers on our floor. So I think like we were using like singlets and stuff like that. Mm. We showed up to do yoga thinking it was going to be really easy. And the the instructor totally called us on it. And like, we were doing it and it oh was, it was really hard. That was my first time doing any <laughs> yoga. And I was like, what is going on? Um, so yeah, that... <laughs> That was fun. What kind of what, what kind of stuff were you doing? Like what what was hard about it? Do oh, think? I don't I don't remember. Yeah. Um, just like like it doesn't look like it's hard, right? But like just holding those poses is oh yeah for for as long as you do is is mm -hmm. crazy. I I did some some more yoga later on when I was like trying to get fit. Like it was part of my. I think I'd do it like two or three times a week. Yeah, and it was rough. That, that was. Mm -hmm it was not like a relaxing thing it was like <laughs> i mean it was it can like... be. so like there are very there's a bunch of different kinds of yoga i guess okay i'm not gonna talk like i know what i'm talking about but <laughs> there do, are do like you do like uh do you yoga. do like the the video ones um yeah yeah so okay. there's there's someone on youtube her name is yoga with adrian and she's like extremely i think she's like the de facto like yoga youtuber at this point um yeah. and she's like very beginner friendly i would say so if you are interested I, I would recommend that channel yeah 
But so you were talking about the, like the different types. Like so, some is less strenuous. I feel like every one I've done has always been strenuous. Yeah, so. yeah. So I think uh, I don't know what like the the default yoga is, but I see a lot of like vinyasa, which is very um, movement oriented. So you're doing things okay. like downward dog, where you're yes. like down in a plank, and then like yeah. maybe you're doing a lunge, and you're yeah, like yeah, like that's the pose. warrior pose. Yeah, thing. yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then there's stuff that's more meditative that could be considered yoga where you're just kind of sitting there and, you know, you have your hands at your heart and you're just kind of um, doing more mental routines, I guess, hmm. would be the way to phrase that. Again, I don't know. I don't want to say like I'm a, a yogi or anything. Yeah. I'm probably totally wrong with all of this. So I hope people don't come after you. <laughs> like. I don't know. Who's going to come um, after me? I don't know. Like the yogis of the world are like, you're the yogis are funny. all going to find my show and come after me. <laughs> Bring it on, yogis. <laughs> and then they're going to come to me and be like, what are you talking about? No, and they, they come. Like, I don't do yoga anymore. Caitlin, I don't know what you're they, come to, <laughs> they come to you. You send them to me. I'll, I'll set okay. them straight. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I remember doing like some of those more relaxing things, but those are always just like a cool down at the yeah. end or maybe like a little bit to start. Yeah, so yeah. One, one thing I'm, I'm uh, my wife did this a couple times. I, I wasn't able to do it, but I'd love to look into it. It's like doing it with your kids. Oh, um, yeah. Claire really liked that. She's our five-year-old. Now, oh. but like that, they, they used to always have a great time doing it together. And it, it's probably hard to get the whole family corralled into doing it. But yeah. it, it would be kind of nice, I feel like. so. Yeah, that could be really fun, I think. Yeah. I think that channel I mentioned does have some. Um, what was the channel name again? Biggest. It was Yoga with Adrian. I will Yoga send it to Adrian. you. Nice. Let's see. Yoga with Adrian, and I think it's I think it's spelled like that. Um, but yeah, uh, so there's a lot of like online resources for stuff like that um mm -hmm. which is helpful now because studios aren't open i think that yeah. would be another goal of mine though is that when things do start opening back up and are safe um i would yeah. want to check out a studio or sign up for a class or something because i've never done that so yeah that'd be cool i so i was talking with yuri when i had him on last year um mm -hmm. you know he does all the martial arts stuff oh um, that's right yeah that's something I'd be look. I'd be interested. I wouldn't. I I wouldn't be interested in doing it now. I don't even know if you can do it now. But um, that, that was similarly when <laughs> looking forward to things opening up. That might be something I'd I'd be interested in to look yeah. into. Yeah, that'd be super. I cool. don't know if I'd have any time for it honestly. But, oh yeah, again with the focus thing. <laughs> yeah, there's just oh. yeah, there's just so many things I'm trying to do. But, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things, speaking of outside hobbies, one of my biggest things is reading. Well, not reading, but listening to audiobooks. Like, okay. I could never get into it before. And something happened over break where, like, audiobooks just snapped for me. Really? I, I could just, like, do it. I, I think it was just, like, doing it on a walk or doing it on a long drive with the kids or something like that. Yeah. But I think I went through, like, five books over break. Oh, my gosh. So, and, and normally I'd... I'd, it would be a good year if I got five books and done in a year. So, yeah, wow. What, yeah. Kind of, um, what kind of books were they? Are you more like a fiction or a nonfiction? I mean, uh, a lot of the stuff I've been looking into is like more, like not self-help, but kind of like productivity yeah. focus. Because that's, you know, that's been one I've th been thinking about a lot. So mm -hmm. there's the um, there's the deep work one. I finally got around to reading that after hearing everyone talk about it and that that was really good um okay. and the the guy who wrote that also has this book called um so good they can't ignore you which was which i also uh went through they, they were both pretty short um and so i just kind of like blew through those both of those were really good and um okay. like good good for getting my mind set for for the next year and then um i also did one called um atomic habits uh, which was really interesting about, it's kind of like about systematizing your life so that like, uh, you're, you're, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's what I've been trying to do for a long time, which is just like make my life better a little bit, but yeah. it's, it's like incrementally building on things. So if, if you make your, if you make your life just 1% better today, um, and you can do that every day, that's, you, you just like cash on that compound interest. So that's awesome. I'll have to check those out. Yeah. Cal Newport. 
Cal Newport's the guy, yeah, who does the, um, he does Deep Work and So Good They Can't Ignore You. He's got some other books there, too, hmm. but I haven't read, read any of them yet. I'll probably, I'll probably look into them, though, because I really mm-hmm. liked his stuff. And the guy who does uh, Atomic Habits, his name's James Clear, and he does a lot of stuff on, like, social media. I think he got started by doing a blog, just blogging about, like, habits and, like, uh, little, like... I guess productivity hacks and stuff like that. So okay. It's kind of an interesting world to like stumble upon. Honestly, I opened up Audible because that's that's where I've been doing everything from, and I was like, let me just search around for what's good, and I I just stumbled into these. So, okay. Yeah, I've been considering Audible as well. Do you think yeah. it's worth the investment? It's they're very interesting. Like I wish they worked more like Netflix <laughs> because. Okay. Netflix, like you, you pay your subscription, you get access to everything. Mm-hmm. The way that uh, Audible works, you pay your subscription and they give you one credit per month and you can cash that credit mm-hmm. in for one book. Okay. And um, yeah, I guess I, I, I guess maybe it's because like licensing just works differently for books or something yeah. like that. Interesting. But it, it makes it so like you get the slow drip and then you, if you want to get more, you have to pay for more. So I see. Hmm. it's... I mean, it's all right, um, but I yeah, just just being able to have the audio books and to like get them on demand has been pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. After those two books, I did what was it? Um, Winning friends and influencing people, hmm. and and then I got the one that Jeff sent us last year for for Christmas, the uh, getting more one. Oh so. yeah, I haven't read that either. <laughs> So maybe listening I, to it is the way to go. <laughs> the the audio book for that one's like I think like twenty hours long. It's very cool. it's very long. Whereas the other ones I think were like five hours each. Oh wow! But, okay. Yeah, but I'm having a hard time getting through it. It's like there's, I I get it. I get what they're saying, but it just shows me I don't think I could be a business person. <laughs> like, it's it's just the the whole thing about it is like getting yourself into this mindset where you got to figure out what your goal is. What is your goal that you're trying to accomplish from this, you know, interaction and anything that doesn't serve that goal, just throw it out. And I'm just like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to <laughs> be that like, yes, I want to get more, but not, not if I'm like, not if I view the world through that lens. Every you know? interaction you have is what's for your benefit only. <laughs> well, well, not, <laughs> not maybe, maybe not that that's maybe a little too harsh, but like, yeah. Like, yeah, it, to, to his credit, it's, it's like, you, uh, the, its thing is like the key to interaction is understanding what the other person wants too. And like, mm-hmm. once you have that information between both of you, then you can like work together and make it work. So it's not like, okay. it's not so much um, like just using someone or being abusive with it. You, you could definitely, and they talk about this in the book too, you could definitely use it for bad purposes if yeah. you wanted. But yeah, it's... Um, it's it's just hard for me to get into. I think I think it's just showing me maybe just stick with engineering <laughs> and, <laughs> and like just just use it in little places where I can. Like it, 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 there's something to it. I think like to to legitimately like negotiating in good faith and trying to to get all parties interested to understand what the other person actually wants. Like there's yeah. there's definitely some good parts of that I can use in my everyday work, but the mm-hmm some of the stuff is just like i don't want to i don't want to like get under someone's nerves just to for the purposes of like getting 50 dollars off something or something (laughs) like that that's that's what a lot of the stories seem to be like to me like Uh the they'll tell tell anecdotes about how like i I just got through one this guy was going through a um a glasses store and he brought in a coupon and they they wouldn't honor the coupon and he kept talking to the manager, kept talking to the manager until he got under her nerves and she screamed out, okay, I don't care about customers as much as I care about money, okay? Oh my and, gosh. And he's like, he broke her. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and oh and then gosh. she like realized that then like gave him the, the discount and like he got what he wanted. But I was just like, like even like, even in the situation where this manager is clearly being a, a bit of a jerk i don't mm-hmm. i don't know if i wanted to do that like part of me just wants to let him be a jerk and take my business elsewhere yeah yeah but, there's definitely like a sense of convenience in just uh 
doing whatever and not really trying. No, I shouldn't say yeah. that. <laughs> Well, I, I think so. What the what the book is trying to get you to do is not do that kind of thing anymore. Like, yeah. if if you really if you really want, I guess if you really wanted this discount, figure out how to how to how to get it. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's interesting though. It can provide a lot of uh, insight for a for a new perspective. So, yeah. Do you do a lot of reading, Caitlin? Um, no, <laughs> I wish I did. I do. I was considering audible because I listen to podcasts like nonstop, yeah. like whenever I'm just like, even just in my apartment, I, I live on my own. So I just have podcasts yeah. playing like almost all of the time. Cool. Um, so I thought maybe who, who do you books. listen to for, for podcasts. Um, I go on Spotify. I bounce around a lot there. They have like this new morning show called the get up where they kind of do okay. like uh, daily news coverage and um, it's kind of like replicating a radio show. So, you know, like how you turn on the radios in the morning and it's like yeah. three guys talking about whatever with some music sprinkled throughout. Yeah. So Spotify is kind of trying to replicate that sort of dynamic where they have like little blurbs about here's the headlines, here's some music, now here's something else and more music. Um, so I, I, I really enjoy that sort of dynamic. Um, that's cool. But yeah, just jumping around on Spotify is like my primary source for all audio based things. So I listen to um, shows like My Brother, My Brother and Me, um, which features like some some internet goons, I think is the, the phrase that might be appropriate here. What is an internet goon? Like just, just like, uh... Uh, like it's these three brothers who just kind of make content for the internet and then okay. they make like this very silly podcast uh, that I'm a huge fan of. Cool. Um, yeah, and just uh, whatever whatever I see. So cool. So maybe cool. audiobooks would be like uh, something to focus more on um, for sort of maybe more than just empty noise and jokes. <laughs> I did yeah. get a book for Christmas this year. I got Michelle Obama's Becoming. Oh, nice. Uh, which I was initially going to get on an audio book, but now that I have it physically, I've been trying to read that, uh, which has been slow. I'm, yeah. I'm not a huge reader, so when you actually pick up something and try to read through it, it's like, yeah. oh, actually, I'm not focusing on what these words are saying right now. So I feel like I am such a slow reader. Same. And it's because, it's because like, uh, my dad does this a lot, too. If he hears something interesting or if he encounters something interesting, he has to put it down and like go take a walk to process it. And so mm -hmm. that's what I'll do with the book. If I come across an interesting point, I'll have this weird urge to put it down and go walk around and process it. And, and then when I come back to the book, it's like five minutes later and I'm still on you know page two or something like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so audiobooks have been kind of good with that too because like I, I won't just sit down and listen to them. I'll like do put them on while I'm doing chores around the house or like taking a walk or something like that. It kind of forces me like where, whereas before I'd want to like the, the times I was trying to do it and like couldn't make it work, it was because I was like pausing it all the time yeah. and going to think about it and then huh. forgetting to put it, even put it back on. <laughs> so it's like interesting point. Hmm. <laughs> and then like <laughs> throw it out without realizing it so but huh. yeah um just going on the walk and like just letting things some things go by and being more okay with just letting them seek into my self conscious or subconsciousness and mm -hmm. i think it's been working pretty well still like I, I don't feel like i've missed anything from the books and at, at the start it was like that was my hesitation like i'm gonna miss stuff because i'm not writing it down i'm not um, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking the pausing it to process it. So I'm just going to lose it all, but I feel like I've been retaining it fairly, fairly well. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'm going to sign up. Did they have a trial maybe? I don't know. All right. This could be they done probably later. Do. But... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's fine. I'm just going to sign up right now. Hold on. <laughs> hey, hey, Audible. So, you, know, <laughs> you, you got that commission deal or something? <laughs> <laughs> this is free advertisement. They should there be you go. You. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah, um, I don't know, Caitlin. You you got anything you're you're passionate about right now? Since since last time we talked, maybe or what am I passionate about? Hmm. Um, I don't know. 
know. I think just going back to what I said before, like exploring more creative outlets mm. is, um, is something I'm, I'm really big on right now. Because I think, uh, you know, I think our, our jobs are very, um, what would be the opposite of creative? Uh, sitting in a room staring at a shiny box all day. Okay, well. <laughs> It's for eight hours <laughs> information based right and so there's a lot of like reading and thinking logic you know like logic based thought processes i guess and so um just having a more creative outlet to just do something for the sake of doing it yeah. um is is something i'm really really into right now i've tried yeah. i've tried doing other things like more artistic things like drawing which i'm not good at <laughs> um so maybe there's something there for me yeah that that's really cool yeah. my so so my five-year-old the one of the things i like love about her the most is that she like she has that this crazy creative streak in her like she she wants to get she gets up and she wants to go do something and it drives me and my wife crazy a little bit because she like makes a huge mess but she's like daddy i wanted to turn the the kitchen into an airplane and she's got all <laughs> like all the chairs are pulled out and they're like in a row and she's like she's got like little uh uh stuffed animals in in each one of the chairs and she's pretending Aww. to be the pilot yeah it. so that, <laughs> is this really cool and um me and her we we did a while back like she watches um the this like uh father daughter thing on on youtube it's called a for adley but you know, like if you're not a parent you want to know about it but like they do all this kind of like interesting creative stuff too and like i don't let her watch much youtube but mm -hmm. that kind of stuff i'm kind of okay with because it, i she, she always gets these ideas for interesting things to do and interesting games to play and we uh, me and her actually did a little video a while back i think i put that in like the narwhal channel a while back because it was like oh. it was like narwhals and mermaids it was just oh, okay yeah that does sound things. familiar yeah <laughs> so we were, we were just like doing exactly what they were doing but just wanting to get her to where i feel like for myself one of the things i'm like a little disappointed in myself is i'm like such a consumer <laughs> like <laughs> i just i just sit and i i I'll consume potty podcasts or YouTube videos. Oh or, yeah, yeah, or me too. Stuff like that, and then, but I'm not putting anything out there. So that's like yeah. what the show was and all this other stuff. But for years, I like never put anything out and mm -hmm. just like kind of let it come to me. But seeing that in her and wanting to push that a little bit more to to not just be a consumer of it, but to also be like interactive with it. You know, I don't know. Oh. No, that's that's really interesting, um, and I think that's a thought I've had as well. Is like how to how to move away from the consumer role and also contribute and give yeah. back. And so, I think that's that's really interesting that you decided to pursue. Would you say like this this podcasts and your blogs are like sort of your way of doing that? Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, so honestly, uh, this is this is kind of interesting too. But I, a, a large part of me wanting to do the podcast started out with uh, trying to get more influence. Okay. Um, so just like wanting to, I don't know. Uh, it sounds kind of conceited when you say it, right? But I, I just want to, I don't know. I, I feel like I've got some stuff, some good stuff to contribute, and got some good ideas. And yeah, for I sure. I think they could help people. So yeah. I want to try to do what I can to get them out there. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that's been, that was my thing to get it started. But then it was just like, I don't know, the, this kind of the thing, uh, the memes going around Twitter or whatever, like uh, w what what this world needs is like one more podcast or something like that. Or well, there's a tweet, <laughs> a tweet <laughs> someone said, I'm happy to announce that in 2021, I will not be doing a new podcast. <laughs> yeah, I can like, I don't know. It's funny when it's on the timeline, but I think it's, yeah. um, I think it's important for people to, because if everyone had the idea of like, oh, they're like, everything's too saturated, I'm not gonna do anything, then like, who's mm. doing anything, you know? Yeah. And so I think like doing things like making a new podcast, even though there are millions of podcasts in the world, you're still offering like your own perspective yeah. and providing something new that maybe yeah. resonates with someone um, who wouldn't be interested in some other podcast, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
Well, I think too, like the maybe maybe just the goals are a little mismatch like uh i think joe rogan signed like this massive deal for podcasting where he's making like millions of dollars um Mm -hmm. with his contract with spotify and so everyone's now thinking about oh you're you're doing podcasting you want to get some of that money huh i'm like i don't i don't think i'd ever (laughs) even get a sponsor honestly but just just being able to like not be a consumer of it but also being something of a producer putting my own thing out there even if it's you know, not great yet, but yeah. we're, we're getting there. No, I, I think, think it's, I think it's the greatest. This is the greatest podcast. I'm so honored to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there, there is some truth to that though, because I think it's really interesting how you, you invite so many different people of different levels of whatever they're doing in their life. Um, and so I think it's really interesting and it's also really good for you. I'm sure there's a lot of networking that's come out of that as well. So, oh yeah. Well, uh, the, the being at Narwhal, I feel like gives me a foot in the door to a lot of things like this. In many ways, this is me cashing out <laughs> on, on being, uh, being at Narwhal, right? Just like riding uh, Jeff and Victor's coattails to to being able to have these kind of conversations with people. But mm-hmm. like um, beyond beyond the associations, just like the knowledge share, I feel like I've gotten I've gotten talking to people, and yeah. um, I don't think you need a podcast for that necessarily. You could just do that with, you know, private conversations, but mm-hmm. like I'm, my, my career right now is six years long and okay. I feel like if, you know, I, I'm older, so I, I'm only six years into my career, but I'm, I'm in my you know middle thirties. So, um, I feel like I want to, I want to figure out any kind of way I can to like jump the line in terms of like that, that experience, uh, you know, uh, curve you've got to travel. And I feel like talking to people is one really good way of, of getting that. Hmm. Like I, I was talking to um, uh, a guy uh, yesterday, 21 years in the business, and just, just being able to, like, pick his brain about certain things and, like, talking about, like, the merry-go-round coming around, like, every seven years. Like, if you've been in the business 21 years, you've seen that come and go a yeah. couple times, you know? So, yeah, yeah, it's, hmm. it's, it's, yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of value in that. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm just having a good time on top of it. Like, yeah, this, is, so this is enjoyable to me. It's just kind of yeah. nice to be able to take that and also like, well, say I'm, I'm doing something out of it. So I'm, yeah, that's, I'm, I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Yeah. We're having a really cool meta conversation now. I know, it. that's true. <laughs> Is that bad? Should we go back let's, to the... Let's, talk, let's have a mm-hmm. podcast about talking about podcasts. Oh, <laughs> I think that, there's got to be a podcast. This definitely podcasts, is. Though, there, right? there, it would be weird if there isn't. Yeah. It would, at, at this point, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a podcast talking about podcasts that talk about podcasts. Oh, should we talk? All right, so we're going to go... No. Okay. I can't do, my brain can't handle that many jumps. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, what? Yeah. The, so let's see. We talked about passions. We talked about twenty twenty one a little bit. I don't know. I'm I'm out of stuff. Do you got we, anything, Caitlin? We could talk about actual development and tech things oh. <laughs> if you wanted to yeah i saw, I saw on there? twitter a little bit ago that you had started it was a while ago so i don't know how uh, relevant this is but i saw that you had started um the epic react course yes are you still following that oh i got off like i do with my <laughs> with books i kept going off the beaten path because i was like <laughs> something shiny <laughs> You know, let, let me follow that's that. Though. Explore. That's good. So yeah, so I'm I'm like I'm like midway through the epic or the advanced hooks course. And... Okay, that one I kind of struggled with, if I'm being honest, and I might oh, yeah? have to go like circle back and go through it again because, uh, yeah, I just I don't know why I thought React was just like it's just like JavaScript with like a little extra sprinkle of whatever, and then I started going through that advanced hooks portion yeah. and i was like oh okay wait hang yeah on. <laughs> so. so it's 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 super interesting to me the, the reason i kept going off the beaten path was i was like oh all these things you can compose them like 
it, when I when I started realizing that with the hooks, I was like, okay, this is making some sense now. Yeah. So that that was that was really cool. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. So have you have you made it all the way through that course? No, I think I <laughs> I think I actually what? stopped after the react or the advanced hooks portion. Okay. Um, not intentionally. It was just at that after that portion, I was like, okay, I, like my my brain needs to decompress <laughs> for a second, and then I just sure. I hadn't picked it back up yet, but I think I've been thinking about it a lot lately, so that mm. it might be a good time to jump back in and see yeah. if I still remember any of it. So after the advanced hooks course, what comes after that? Do you do you recall? Uh, is it testing? I know I'm he's got sure. like a whole thing. Kent C. Dodds has a whole course on testing. I didn't yeah. think there was any testing in there, but maybe. Oh, it looks like performance is up next. Or okay. wait, no. Advanced React patterns and then performance. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, the the advanced patterns was kind of cool. It's yeah. very interesting. Testing React that, and then React suspense. I even know what that is. I guess we'll find out when we get to it. <laughs> React suspense. I think was it. I think I saw Ken talk about suspense on some form of webinar conference thing. Um, uh -huh. But I think it's basically just doing asynchronous backend calls. Okay. I'm probably misinforming again. Never mind. Well, I guess we'll find out together what the is. <laughs> How do we get there? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the the thing I remember people uh, talking about from Twitter was, and you know, of course, we're we're in our happy little Angular land where things just stay the same forever. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but like they were talking about like hooks. Hooks come out, and all of a sudden, everyone's refactoring their entire code base to hooks. Mm -hmm. and people thinking suspense was going to be similar. Let's time to now suspense is that. So let's all refactor to suspense, but it, it doesn't seem like it's quite that exactly. Like you wouldn't, really? you wouldn't do that. So huh. I, I could see with the, just like looking at the difference. Cause you know, in the, in the lessons we've done so far, he talks about like, I, I just watched the videos kind of where you showed migrating an old class based component to the hooks. Yeah. It's like, He's, he's, he's really effective, I think, at doing what he does, because it's essentially he's moving lines around and then he's done. <laughs> and it's, that's, it's that's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's really interesting. Re React in general is like, it seems to me much more JavaScript-y um, mm -hmm. than Angular. Like Angular yeah. feels like, I, I, Angular felt really at home for me when I first got into it coming from Java because it was just like, yeah, I mean, this is, here's a class and here's some properties on that class. And I guess these just hook into the template over here and, you know, all, I think all set. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's, that comes with its own set of growing pains too, right? Because mm -hmm. Angular is like the first real, um, like, language framework I've, I have experience with. And so mm -hmm. to go from Angular, which is very uh structured and things are like one way and then going from that to react which is kind of like you could do it this way but you could also do it this way or this yeah. way or this way it's just like not having that safe cradle of angular is like oh what do i do <laughs> yeah so i don't know it's oh. been it's, it's been interesting um but i wish i could just like really sort of like nail down like what i'm doing <laughs> yeah well so there's there's been um Oh, I'm forgetting the name of it now. There's like a new framework out for React, which is really interesting because it's like a, you have to pay to get a license to use it. Oh, which okay. Which is like interesting. Like, I don't know yeah. how they're enforcing that, but it's kind of cool to think about it. Hey, yeah. Have you heard about this? Let me see if I can I not, and figure no. out what this name was. Uh, oh, man, I don't even know what to Google. Let's, let me just try React Framework. Maybe that maybe they paid for enough SEO. The framework for all, the framework. The framework for the framework. Uh, no. So React itself is like a library. Because, like, yeah, that's true. Which 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 leaves itself open. Oh, I feel really bad that I can't remember the name here, but the um where it kind of leaves itself open to doing like a framework where you have like more of the the prescription of Angular, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it, it definitely feels like when I get into the React stuff, like it's just taking the work I normally do with Angular, and for the most part, it's the same. 
Yeah. I'm just like rotating it just a little bit because I'm not I'm not living in my world of like change detection and mm -hmm. like RxJS. I really miss RxJS. Adam keeps telling Same. me <laughs> that like it's like peanut butter and and chocolate and peanut butter. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. I feel it feels more like peanut butter and peanut butter. <laughs> Like, uh, I'll, I need to get more into React so I can like have a better yeah. conversation with him. But like, yeah, like I don't, I don't see why you would ever use RxJS. It feels like it's just like not very well set up for that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know. Do you do you use a lot of RxJS in your in your Angular code, Caitlin? In like Angular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm almost like too dependent on RxJS. Like there have definitely been some times where I've been like, you just use this map and this map and someone else. Yep, yep. It's just like, why are you just do this instead? What are you doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel you there. I, I feel like a lot of times with Angular, it's, it's not so much I'm writing Angular as I'm writing RxJS, uh -huh. which is which is nice to feel. Like I, I do that on purpose because I like RxJS, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very complicated and it's, you, React seems like it's just like the it's the same principles. It's just like the um, the execution is a little different, and the execution actually seems a little bit simpler mm -hmm. to me. Which I'm I'm like I don't know. I'm, it's like this internal conflict in me, Caitlin, because I want to be the Angular guy still, but like the the React stuff is like, yeah, this kind of makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So, so let me ask a question. This is something yeah. I think about a lot, um, but I think being only an Angular developer for the only four years I've been in the industry. Mm -hmm. So you pick up this new framework, like let's say you learn React fully, you go through this course and you just, you feel good about it, right? Yeah. And you decide, I wanna be a React developer, but you, Zach, have a lot of experience, prior experience with RxJS Angular, you know, you're considered like uh, like a senior level in your current position. So if you decide to make that transition from framework to framework, like what does that look like? Do you start at entry level again, do you think? Well, so remember when I was doing like the live streaming with, with React? Yeah. Um, I, I think that was like back when we did our, our first episode. But uh -huh. like the, the, way I, the way I was thinking about it was... Um, like it felt like I, it felt very cool. Like it, it kind of felt like, um, like when you can replay a video game after you've beaten it, but you can like bring some of your items back from yeah. your last save file. Yeah, like a roguelike. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like that. But like, um, I'm forgetting which one it is. There's like some, there's like some RPG I used to play where after you beat it the first time, like you could, you transfer all of like the really really good items to your to your next save file and just Ooh. like replay the story again and it felt that always felt really cool because you're just like is like it felt like god mode was yeah activated, overpowered you know? yeah yeah <laughs> that that's kind of how it felt like it definitely felt like i was learning everything and everything was new but it mm -hmm. was like i guess from from doing the angular stuff and just from doing a lot of stuff with node and a lot of stuff with javascript in general it felt like okay i get all this yeah like if if it, 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 it had that feeling of oh, I'm starting over, but I've got all those all those good wef those good weapons still. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's kind of how it felt going back to React. But um, I don't think so. I, I was talking with uh, my last episode was with uh, B Man with with Bram, and um, you know he's doing right now fifty percent Angular, fifty percent React because wow, you, you know his. He's doing a lot of contracting work and he's by himself so he does what he can get and yeah. the you know a lot of people want react but he really likes angular so mm -hmm. I, I don't know if i don't know if i don't know if you have to go from you know being all in on one and then all in on the other okay and i feel like i feel like a lot of people are going more into that it's not that i'm an angular developer it's like i do like 40 percent angular 40% React and 20% like Vue or something like that. Yeah. So have that, you, that's have you actually been using Vue? No, I, I, I tried Vue and I was like, uh, I, I couldn't get into it. I don't want to say <laughs> okay. anything bad about it no, because no, no, I know no. a lot yeah. of people really like it and I, yeah. I'm sure it's like the same thing essentially, but it's just like, it wasn't different enough from Angular to make me want to get into it and it was frustrating enough 
that that one just felt frustrating trying to get into it. I feel like because it was very similar. It felt very similar to Angular, but at the same time unfamiliar. Different so was, enough. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It felt like I was in the bad dream where nothing worked like it should. <laughs> it's kind of like that. That was my experience <laughs> with you. I'm sure it was just from being doing all everything in Angular and being so used to that. Is yeah. This, confirmation uh bias or yeah. confirmation uh, uh that's not the right word you, you know what i'm saying right yeah <laughs> but yeah that, that was that was my experience with you i do want to try svelte at some point too but Ooh. this is where i'm getting into focus like i want i want to do this year like each month i want to kind of have it be its own thing for so for january i'm trying to work on my like my personal site that's kind of like my project or my my big thing to look at and then like for February, I want to just like put that completely away, like get, get it to a good point and be done with it by the end of January and then go to something else entirely in February. I think it might be, it might be something, I don't know. It might, might be Svelte. I've been thinking about maybe going into Dino really Ooh. hard too. Yeah. Um, and just like doing stuff in there, but just, just try to be focused on one thing at a time. So I'm I'm gonna throw Svelte on the heap, and maybe at some point it will make it into the stack, and I'll, <laughs> I'll get to it for one of these months in 2021. Yeah, but yeah, that's. I like that approach, like one month at a time. Yeah, I, I just feel like, it, and um, you know, both a lot of the books I was going to, getting into were talking about this too. It's just like, I feel like what I do is I live in the heap, you know, like I I just. I swim in it. I'm like, do you know, seems really cool. And it's all like spend two hours looking at it. And then I'll be like, felt looks pretty cool. And like <laughs> go, go into that for an hour and like not retain anything meaningful for any of those experiences. And I just do that. And by the end of the month, it's like, well, what did you do? <laughs> like, well, I had this winding path of like half getting into stuff and nothing to show for it. <laughs> yeah. So that that's, that's kind of the goal for trying to have these things and just, I'd love to love to get into it where I can like become maybe not an expert on something, but like actually competent in something I'm interested in. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, like I'm trying to set up my my personal site to to document that journey a little bit and like be able by the end of the year to say, okay, this is what I did in February. I I did Dino and I did like X Y and Z blog posts about it and maybe a YouTube video about it and I did did this little sample app in it and you can go see it so. that's such a good idea yeah i would Thanks. love to see it at the end of the year if it is if it's something that's like uh public or shareable yeah no i i, I, I want to make it definitely want to make it shareable like get, going back to what we were talking about with like just making making our our stuff more interactive mm -hmm. um like our our investment in this community more interactive I, i'd really like to make it first or public um, as much as I can. So I'll be, I'll be thinking about that as I do stuff, but yeah, I'm, I i do not know. I've, we'll, we'll see how it works. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to burn myself out. So. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I'm trying to guard against that too. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just, I feel like I've got a lot of energy for this new year for some reason. That's, so that's I'm just good. Embrace trying that. To capitalize. I wish I did too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I feel like I normally don't have this much amount of energy. So I'm just like trying to try to grab it while I can. Yeah, you know? for sure. Because <laughs> who knows what's going away again. <laughs> it's going to be like a second pandemic in a month. And oh, no. <laughs> we're all going to go back into our old slumps. So I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, Caitlin, we got we to gotta get together and like, do some of the react stuff at some point that'd be cool i maybe i could do maybe i could do that for one of my months it's like focus on react get through the rest of kent's uh courses that's actually why i stopped honestly <laughs> stopped doing kent's course because i was reading um i think it was the uh deep work book which is talking about focus a lot and realizing mm -hmm. i'm like what am i doing this for <laughs> like yes it's fun but I'm like trying to do all these other things at the same time. I just need to f drop everything else and focus on one and try to actually make some make it somewhere with this one. Yeah. So yeah. at some point I will pick up Kenzie Dodd's stuff again and go through it one of these months. And hopefully, yeah. like it looks like one of the courses is like building an app, right? Yeah, I'm excited for that, that one. That's really like cool. the the last, the very last one is like building a um, fully integrated application. So 
That's so cool. I yeah. bet that's really good advertising too. If he can, if if people like do this and like actually deploy it, and so they say like this is built with Ken C. Dodd's Epic React Core, so that everyone goes and buys it. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's a genius, Kent. Genius. <laughs> Perfect marketing. Perfect marketing. Yeah. But yeah. Um, any any closing thoughts, Caitlin? I think last time I asked you, like, if you could do anything, <laughs> you have five seconds to change a listener's life. Oh, that's right. What would you say? Are we doing the same thing? No, you, you don't have to do it if you don't oh, want okay, to. Okay, okay. Um... <laughs> You can if you do. If you got do I get good. some other prompts or should let's I just see. like freestyle it? Uh, let's see. Um, is a hot dog a sandwich? No, we did that. I remember no, that. Dang it. <laughs> uh, Frosty, Frosty gave me all these good ones and I keep forgetting them. I, really? I, yeah, I feel like I always just kind of, I feel like I'm snooty. I, I think of them as like kind of gimmicky. <laughs> I don't think a hot dog is a sandwich. It's like its own thing. Thank you. That's that's exactly what my feelings are on the topic. Or is it, right? Because like the definition of a sandwich is... No, we we put it away. <laughs> we put All it right. away. <laughs> um, I will what... say a hot dog is and is not a sandwich simultaneously. It exists in lim- in sandwich limbo. Mm, it's it's uh, Schrodinger's sandwich. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here's one, and it, this might be a bad one. I don't know. No, what go for what it. scares you? Oh my god, everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Is that the honest? Okay. Um, what scares me? Huh. I don't know. The thought. I think something that's scary. This is. I'm gonna go meta again. This could be like mm. your meta episode. The, something that's scary is letting something that scares me hinder me from doing that thing. Mm. So like the fear, the greatest, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. It's yeah. Kind of yeah. That's good. That. Okay. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's Wait, cool. can I throw it back at you? Yes. Is that something oh, that what, what, what scares me? Or guess? Yeah. Oh, death. Okay. That's, that's fair. <laughs> <not> really, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm very scared about going through that door. Uh, so, uh, we have you seen Soul yet? No. There's a new there's a new Disney Pixar movie called Soul. Oh, okay, I've heard about it. Yeah, it's it was really good, but it wasn't at all what I was expecting. But mm-hmm. it, it was like, are you gonna watch it? I, I probably should shouldn't I? spoil it. I think you I should. I don't have yeah. Disney Plus or anything. Oh. So. <laughs> You need Disney Plus. I'll give you my I'll give you my uh, account if you want. You can go watch it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was just like it, it dealt with some stuff around death, and I was just like, it kind of cut me like <laughs> straight mm. deep in because I've always I've always like been very scared of death, and I've always been pretty you know okay about that or not okay about that, but like I know that about myself. I'm very yeah. scared of dying, yeah, especially since becoming a father. I'm I'm very scared of being separated from my kids or my wife in a way I can't get back to them. And like, I don't know. And that like that, that's kind of a more selfish one, but there's also like this, well, if I, if I die, what, what happens to them kind of Mm. stuff? Like I imagine their lives would get immeasurably more hard at the same time. So it's just, that's, yeah, that's what scares me. That's, that's a real fear. I think. I think yeah. it's a fear that everyone has too. Like the people who say I'm not afraid of death, I think I'm calling their bluff. Yeah. Come, uh, come find me on Twitter and tell me that you're not afraid of death and I'm going to tell you you're wrong. <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, there's, um, I think there's a famous saying that's like, there's there's two kind of people in this world. Uh, those those who are afraid of death and those who are lying to themselves. So, yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of that, but yeah, yeah. What gives you hope? Let's let's end on that yeah, because okay. that. <laughs> that's kind of a downer. <laughs> what gives me hope? Um, uh, maybe just the opposite of death. Uh, life gives life. me hope, right? Like yeah. I don't know. Like the the 
the the human expectancy is that the term i don't know life like, expectancy yeah 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 like we humans live way longer now than they used to you know so i'm excited oh. i'm not excited but i'm okay with the idea of getting old and maybe you know starting that process whenever it may come um i think it'll be okay <laughs> yeah i i I'm going to sound foolish for this, but I'm I'm very I'm very hopeful that we'll like our generation, like you and me, will live long enough. I mean, I'm maybe a half generation ahead of you. I actually don't know how old you are, Caitlin. I am 26. You're 26. Okay, we're pretty close then. We're like okay. fairly close, I guess. I'm, <laughs> I'm making myself younger than I actually am, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Like I I'm I have I'm holding out some hope that we'll. We'll get to the point where like we'll have enough technology that maybe dying won't have to be a thing for us you know okay. that's, that's, that's kind of a i don't know about that <laughs> i mean it's definitely coming <laughs> like, but i don't know if i'm hopeful for it okay it's uh, like that's... a whole other can of worms maybe yeah it, well, it's, it is really interesting to think about yeah i'm, I'm to me it's just like it's just it's like this thing where I don't want to let myself hope for it because I don't think it's possible and I don't know if I should be hoping for it, but I really do. Like really, really deep inside, I really am open for that. Yeah. Um, and just the, the prospect that could bring with it, like figuring out how to reverse aging and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. right now we can't figure out how to like provide people basic, basic healthcare without like charging $50,000 <laughs> for like the most basics of surgeries so yeah i'm not really holding out a lot of hope for it <laughs> if we do see it in our lifetime we probably won't be able to afford it unless yeah. we're famous maybe yeah. maybe you'll you'll hit it real big with zds and be like <laughs> number one I, I, parts. I ain't counting on that let me tell you caitlin <laughs> we can become <laughs> best friends with elon and he'll take good care of you <laughs> technologically yeah, we'll, we'll, speaking we'll, we'll he'll take good care of me on mars <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that so there was there's this black mirror episode me and my wife watched mm -hmm. um did you have you seen any of those um i've seen a few episodes okay so you, you kind of know it's like yeah. the twilight zone kind of mm -hmm. there's this one where um like everyone was living in this um in this like alternate reality and you find out like towards uh, the middle or the end of the episode i think that one of the people inside the re alternate reality is like this really old person who they've been keeping alive inside of the alternate reality. And like, I don't know, it, it ended with like, with them having to make the decision, like, do we, do we stay? It was like a couple, do we stay in here together forever? Mm -hmm. Or do we die and maybe like not have each other anymore? And that was really hard. Me and my wife watched it together. And we both were like crying by the oh end of it. God. Cause we were like, I don't know what the choice we'd make would be. I don't want to go oh, on without you, but I also yeah. want to live. Oh, this is what it was. It was that, it was that like one of them, one of them actually died and the other had the choice. Do I stay in, in alternate reality and live forever? Or yeah. do I die and try to like, try to get to find them again? Yeah. So. That, that was just crazy, but yeah, Oof. that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that show, that's a, I think that's, I didn't watch the whole series because I think it's a, it's a bit too heavy for me. I, I definitely um, got to some episodes where I was like, I can't, I need a break. Yeah. <laughs> like, those were heavy. Was, just go sit in an empty room for a while and think about it. <laughs> and think about what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That, I think that's a good note to end on. What do you think, Caitlin? I think it's good. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh again. no, thank, thank you. You're, you're very <laughs> kind to be to to humor me with my little show and. No, it's going to be a big show. It's going to be a huge show. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, but yeah, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do it with me, Caitlin. This was this is a lot of fun and just fun yeah. hanging out with you and talking with you. Yeah, likewise. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you again. Take care. Yeah. I hope to be back on soon, right? Yeah, yeah. Anytime you want, <laughs> just let me know. We'll get you in. or okay. I'll, I'll probably be coming back to you in, in a month or so and be like, Caitlin, can you do it again? Yes, yes. So, For sure. Yeah. All right. So, sounds great. Thank See you ya. all. Bye.